For the last few years, Manchester United have been the whipping boys. We are the whipping boys no more. Eric Ten Hag has this Manchester United team believing, fighting to the death, to the end. And Manchester United there beating Barcelona. What a night at Old Trafford. Coming from 1-0 down. Subs again at halftime. Changed it. Great management from Ten Hag. Well, we are back, baby. I don't, it doesn't matter what happens on Sunday. We're in a cup final. But just the momentum around the club. It's, it's just the, every single game. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And United there tonight. We all turned up. But shout it from the rooftops, ladies and gentlemen. I'm saying it now. I've waited long enough. United really are back. And the only way, the only place that we are looking right now is upwards. We're not looking at anything that's happening below us. We're not looking at anything that's happened in the past. We're not looking at anything that's maybe hurt, happened earlier this season. Everything right now is heading in the right direction. And it's headed upwards because of that man. But what a goal tonight. And that, that, that clearance from Rafael Varane right at the death summed it all up. This whole team, mate, it's like a Royal Rumble how they're fighting together. It's amazing. And I say, <laughs> Anthony, I've been trying to, you know, defend him against criticism. Occasionally, it's been frustration. But what a moment for him. Old Trafford, if it had a roof, it would have come off. Old Trafford exploded when Anthony scored that goal. A cultured finish. He had his foot. Oh, man, just... What a goal and what a moment that was for Manchester United. I said that I didn't think whether I didn't think our season hinged on whether we went through tonight, but the momentum could mean so much. Look, football clubs on this badge, and we are starting to look like a football club again, man. That photo there, Martinez. Oh my god. Martinez that was a weird noise. Martinez. Anthony. Fred. Second half Fred. Try and tell me he's not one of the best in the world in that position when he plays in that role, that free aggressive pressing role. Unbelievable, a pure dynamo. But going back to that goal again, the blonde boy is there on the left and the right wing. The subs just changed it in the second half. I'll speak about that in a bit. But Anthony, giving it the finger. <laughs> we gave it two fingers to Barcelona there. 2-1, I've got my prediction spot on. Oh, I'm not calmed down yet. I've really not calmed down yet. That goal from Fred, by the way. Just Fred in that second half. Fred, oh, <laughs> I I say that Fred either puts in one of those performances that is like a 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, or he just leaves you frustrated. First half, the game kind of passed him by, but the second half, something switched. I don't know what Ten Hag feeds these players at halftime. I don't know how inspirational his speeches are, but they must come out just feeling like uh, they want to run at 150 miles an hour because that's what we did when we came out in the second half. Came out against Barcelona. Played the aggressive press, won the ball back, and within two minutes, we got that equaliser. Bruno fired it across. Fred's first touch was arguably better than the finish. Had no right to touch that in between. I think it was De Jong and Busquets. Either way, on his right foot, two, right into the bottom corner. Amazing from Fred. Amazing goal from Fred. What a photo. <laughs> that's, a Phil, that's a Phil Jones type face there from Fred. I'm going to go back to the goal. A little bit more, a little bit more complimentary to Fred. Because I want to be complimentary to Fred. I want to be complimentary to every single one of those players that played there tonight. But I have to focus on my manager. Eric Ten Hag, right? Tonight we played, look, first half, we had Veghorst playing in this number nine position. I'll be honest, it wasn't working. Rashford out on the left wing, Sancho in the number 10, even Bruno on the right wing. He didn't particularly look like he was enjoying himself. Half time, what happens? Let's wait. Let's see what happens. I sod that. Half time, Veg course, you're off. Rashford, you're up front. Sancho, you went into you went onto left, Bruno into number 10, and then Anthony on the right hand side. The game flipped. The game turned into what happened at the new camp, where United were in control. I don't particularly know why we didn't do it in the first half. Maybe it was always an intention to try and be, be more aggressive in the second half. But I don't particularly think it would be. Either way, it wasn't working. Ten Hag saw it. Steve McLaren always spoke about it before he became, before Ten Hag became manager. Ten Hag can see what's going on in games and knows how to change it. And I tell you what, our bench across the course of the season, if you were to do a case study, there's probably no team that's had their games more positively affected by substitutes than Manchester United. Second half... Garnacho and that man right there coming on, they flipped the game for United. As soon as we had those two on the on the wings, we had a different dynamic altogether. Jaden Sancho didn't have his best game. It's all right, you can't have your best game every single game. But Garnacho caused problems. 
But how have I not spoken about Casemiro for five minutes? Casemiro being like right at the end of that first half. David De Gea. You saw the best and the worst of David De Gea tonight. It's like flipping a coin. What was he doing? Casemiro. What a double block that was. Casemiro at the end of the first half. First half. Varane at the end of the second half. Hala Madrid. <laughs> Hala Madrid indeed. But Casemiro on his birthday there. Mate, that ball that he gave to Bruno after two minutes. I'm so glad that goal, that, that missed chance didn't affect us. And I'm also glad, I'm going full screen for this, that that referee's first half performance didn't affect... What, what, what That was a foul on Rashford. I can understand how the penalty was given, but it was soft. Nine out of ten times that does not get given. And then there was another one on the edge of the box. I think Shaw burst through. It, the referee was an odd performance. Hmm. Barcelona. They like referees, don't they? Anyway. Back to this, Casemiro in that second half. That <laughs> Busquets and Casemiro basically did the exact same tackle within 90 seconds. Just uh, Garnacho went over Busquets' shoulder. He pulled him back. <laughs> Casemiro just did like a, I don't know, he gave a full spin a on, <laughs> on Lewandowski. Pulled him back. I'll take that yellow. But that's what you've got to do to see out these games. You've got to be able to fight for it. To take that smart yellow sometimes. Because it helps kill the game. And we killed that game, man. Oh, this man here. I'm zooming in on him. I've been speaking about him all season long. And it, it goes to... The, the thing that annoyed me so much about the criticism towards Martinez at the start of the season, right, was it's fashionable to jump to an early conclusion, to be the first person to say something, to say absolutes in, in, your, um, in your commentary. And you just shouldn't do it. Even if you get proven to be right, you shouldn't do it. You can't make absolutes so early on. Martinez was written up, he's too small. He's too small. I don't know what that accent was. Anyway, he's not too small. He's just great. What you lack in one area, you make up in another. And Martinez, and again, going back to that photo there, look at it. Look at look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. Look at this one here with, with Anthony as well. Martinez. Ah, oh, I can't look past him as my player of the season, but they're really... Up. Of course I can. Marcus Rashford, who am I kidding? But Martinez, I absolutely love that bloke. Bruno Fernandes there tonight. <laughs> he absolutely knew what he was doing <laughs> when he booted the ball into Frankie de Jong's chest. Frankie de Jong, by the way. How you doing, mate? You all right? Do you want to you speak to someone? Do you want to speak to anybody? Just call the ticket office if you want to come back to Old Trafford anytime soon. But enjoy, enjoy your flight home. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Bruno knew exactly what he was doing when he booted the ball in his chest. And look, Vedkost, were, it wasn't working in the first half, right? I thought that he would start him in the number 10 role. Rashford up front, Sancho on the left, Bruno on the right. Pretty much what he did at the new camp. And Ten Hag didn't. But as I said, to his credit, Eric Ten Hag, whether he got whether he got the hands out, whether he, whether he, he screamed in the... I don't know what he said in the changing room at half time, But the subs changed the game. Our manager there took us to this position where we are. And all of a sudden, we're now knocking Barcelona out. The momentum flowing through this club. It's like we were like a, I don't know, like a hibernating bear. We hibernated for what? It's been 10 years, 10, coming on 10 years. Oh, gee, a long time since we won the Champions League. 2008, 14 years. A long, I don't want to think about how long. I just did though. But Ten Hag has this team Firing has every single player fighting for that shirt in the same way that me and you would if we ever, well, if A, if we were good at football and B, we were ever given the opportunity to play for United, we would just all out, 100% all over the shop. That's what these players are doing now when previously they might have gone 1-0 down to Barca. Yeah, I'm not sure if I fancy it. Mm, mm, nah, never mind. Everybody scrapping. It's a bunch of warriors playing for the general himself. General Ten Hag steering this United team through to the... Mate, we're, we're favourites for the Europa League now. Get your get your hotels booked for Budapest. Those of us that already did book them with pre-cancellation. I'm not unbooking that, baby. Let's get planning for the final. Might be a little bit overzealous there. But look, Ten Hag, we're back. I don't care what anyone says. Doesn't really matter what happens on Sunday. Well, kind of, actually, kind of does. I hope we win on Sunday. I love this team. And I love watching United again. We're back.